to the new quarter and the new the new life look at my new office i love it we still have a lot of work to do with it but um i want to make sure you can hear me can everybody hear me uh before we go into how to steal like an artist and you know i learned a lot about stealing like an artist from going to well teaching at some singer songwriter retreats and also taking uh classes with some writers that taught me how to steal like a, like an artist it's funny because my guitar instructor he's the one that said amateurs borrow professionals steal so before we go into that and explaining you what does that actually mean i want to make sure that you can hear me and everything's okay so i'm going to go check in some of my groups here uh can someone give me a yes um to that th just yes you can hear me because <laughs> i'm using my get my my uh mic yes gail hey gail you're awesome okay so i'm going to show you i'm going into my kindle come on kindle. wake up sometimes my ipad just doesn't want to do what i want it to do Okay, let's do it again. There we go. Okay, up here, over there, over there. Nope, not there. I'm going to show you the, the cover of the book that I'm talking about. Uh, here you go. It's a much better book if you get it in soft cover or hard cover because it's meant to be felt. It's really amazing, actually. This book is, I'm going to show it to you because I love using it. And this is, I didn't know that someone was finally going to write a book about it. So it's called, come on, dude. Here we go. Steal like an artist. And that's backwards, unfortunately. Is everything backwards? I'm noticing that my words are backwards, which is unfortunate. So let's see if I can fix that. I'm not sure how. Orientation selection not available while live. Um, share screen, disable settings. Let's see if I can get the settings to, uh, hey, we're, there we go. Boom. <laughs> All right, let's see. Now you can, now as far as I know, you can read it. Still like an artist. Um, and he wrote this book. It's a short book. Um, and you know how much I love short books. And he goes through each section and goes through like the stories of genetics, garbage in, garbage out. He explains what other um, artists do and how, you know, you've got to school yourself and save your thefts for later, you know, as you school yourself on what this means. Make things and know yourself first. So it's not about, you know, nobody is born with a style or a voice, he says. Um, so it's up to you to find your style and voice. Now, that's pretty easy, actually. And if you want to work together, let me know. Um, if you're interested in my one-on-one -on -one coaching, just put in the comments, uh, yes, I'd like a free strategy call. And we can go over a strategy that works for you to get your book out. And if you're an entrepreneur, definitely, definitely write a short book. Because this is my new book. It's in pre-order right now. And I'm going to put in the comments um, the where you can buy it. So the pre-order is a signed copy, hold on. And you also get a 90 minute bonus workshop that's exclusive to just the people who have bought the pre-order. Now, what this means is it's a 90 minute transformational writing workshop to help you break through resistance, understand your personal resistance, which pretty much like affects every area of your life. But we're gonna use writing as the tool to see it, to understand it, and then get very get a lot of clarity and focus on the book that you want to write. Um, you don't have to want to write a short book for the to buy this. This is not about writing a short book. This is about breaking through the fear of uncertainty to write your book because we're so uncertain. I've had strategy calls and consultations recently with people that you know they're already like, well, what am I going to do with the book when it's written? I'm like, you got to write the book first. And then it actually tells you what to do. By experiencing finishing a book, you will know what to do with the book. That's the irony. You've got to get to the end. You've got to work your finishing muscle. 
But granted, if you work with a coach like me, I'm also a marketing coach. I'm an online exp- uh, marketing online ma- marketing expert, and I have a certification in transformation, which means that I am a life coach and I help you get past your your inner blocks. So when you're writing and you're learning about your resistance and you get past those inner blocks, you get past inner blocks in so many areas. So I recommend this book because I love it. I actually am very proud of it, and it really will help you get out of resistance. The elect the 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 Kindle launch. The if you just want to buy a Kindle version of it, um, and you don't want to sign copy and you don't want to go to the workshop, why I don't know for twenty two dollars, uh, <laughs> it will be available um, April twentieth. So let me just put, hey Lana, I was just you are oh my gosh, Lana, I was just talking to you in the higher realm today. I literally was telling you, Lana, I got to call you today. We're going to catch up. We've got stuff to do together. And I just know that you heard me because we're both highly intuitive and psychic. Okay. So grab that, uh, grab one of these and um, I'll sign it and you can bring in the workshop and that'll be awesome. Or just talk to me. Uh, Lana's my, one of my greatest clients that I worked with. She finished her book. She got on TV uh, in one of the morning shows in Colorado. She's just a rock star coach. Lana Wolf, everybody. Let's give it up for Lana Wolf. I I wish I had a button for um, clapping. All right. Steal like an artist. Let's get this going because at one o'clock, I come off the public world. And then at one o'clock, I go into my one short book group where I answer questions every week. So if you're interested in being in my one short book group, you can go to uh, oneshortbook.com. Okay, I'm just going to promote my book. I don't want to confuse you. Uh, And uh, the link is there. Let me put it in the other areas where you can find it. Because I don't think Restream will let me stream in on all devices. Like if I put that in there, do, 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 do. So this is going to be funny because whenever I do this, um, then I have to do that and then I got to do this. Okay. So the link to my pre-order is down there. I'll put it in the, I'll put it on YouTube in a minute. So let's talk about Steel Like an Arch. So I'm going to share my screen in a second. I was stuck on April 1st. April is write a poem uh, a day month. So it's 30 poems in 30 days. Now, you don't need to be a poet to to steal like an artist. I also have books here that I'm going to go over. This is um, a nonfiction book called The Go-Giver. And it's a sales book, a little story about a powerful business idea. I'm going to show you how you can steal stuff from here to get out of writer's block. I'm also going to show you how to steal stuff from, say, the Gifts of Imperfection. We've got Brene Brown. Um, and we have a collection of creative nonfiction. So these are tiny, short memoirs. And I'm kidding you. Like, not, I'm not kidding you. Like one or two pages of a memoir. So you could go to a memoir or you can get a, an anthology of short little memoirs. It doesn't matter. I'm going to show you. Okay. So first I'm going to tell you what happened on April 1st. So April 1st comes and... I am stuck as a duck in the muck. And I'm like, oh no, (laughs) going through resistance. And of course I know why. Um, Just, uh, what was it? It was because I moved. It was because I haven't been writing poetry in a while. So I just haven't been writing poetry in a long time. And I was like, well, what am I going to write? So I took Sage Cohen's uh, I bought her book, which included a private fi- Facebook group. And her she has a book of 30 prompts for April for 30 days. She used to have a class. And then um, you buy her book and you wind up, I don't know if she's actually taking people. If you're interested in this, if you're interested in joining the write, your, uh, write a poem a day, put in the comments, I'm interested in poet, the, the write your, just put 30 and 30. Just put 30, the word, just the number 30. And I will connect you to the to sage cohen you just got to buy her kindle book that includes entrance into her private facebook group as well as um she is offering a workshop as well 
that comes with it. So just put 30 and 30 in there. So what I did was I was like, ah, and she, re she referenced Mary Oliver. So the first prompt was to use a metaphor, some kind of a metaphor. And she references Mary Oliver. So I'm, I'm like, well, I'm no Mary Oliver. What am I going to do? So I, I went online and I looked up Mary Oliver poems and there was a link and it said 10 of the most famous Mary Oliver poems. Now, when I was in a Matthew Dickman, who's also a poet, Matthew Dickman is amazing. Uh, when I was in his workshop in Portland, he taught us how to take little lines from things, stick it together. Don't use the exact line if it's obvious. Like if, if, you know, if the line is the geese, you know, what are you going to do with this one precious life? There she has something like that. Or, you know, the geese are on the porch looking at me as if they knew me for the whole time I was alive. I'm making this terrible. But if it's a line that obviously is a very specific line that is obviously Mary Oliver's line, you don't really want to use it. Okay. But if it's a general line, like, well, how do you feel today? You can use that line if you want to. So you don't actually use the lines that you're stealing. But so what I did is I took 10 poems. I grabbed a bunch of lines from these 10 poems. And then I changed things, took some cinnamon, cinnamon, synonyms. Um, I moved things. I moved things to where she maybe put it at the top. I put it to the bottom if it was an ordinary line. Ordinary meaning a sentence that anybody would have said. And this is the poem that... Uh, that came out of it. And so I'm actually right now going to share my screen with you. I'll, I'll grab it from Facebook because I have it posted on, on my profile, which will be easy. Okay. So when you, right over, here's day one of 30. Okay. So here's what happened. And these are all from different poems from Mary Oliver that I then changed some of the adjectives, I looked up some synonyms. I changed, put, put things in there that only I said, like when I talk about Morse code, you know, that's me. So here you go. Here, let's look at this real quick. You'll get what I'm saying here. And I'll even do this. Uh, 10 best Mary Oliver poems. And then we'll go on quickly to show you how this works in nonfiction and memoir. All right. So let's see. Share screen. Okay. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Can I share the whole thing? Oh, well, let me show. It. Okay. First, let me share this. So you should be able to see this. Yes, you can. So these are 10 that you should read. So there was the swan. So like, for instance, I clicked on the swan. Let's see if I can remember what I took. Um, so, and have you two finally figured out what beauty is for? So remember that line. Have you two finally figured out what beauty is for? Okay. And then we can look at the other one. I'll probably even remember which ones I took. Uh, then I looked in invitation and I saw something. And not for the sake of winning. Okay. And not for the sake of winning. So I started taking these things uh, and just going through all 10 and just putting them on a piece of paper, on a piece of, on my Word document. And then, hold on, I'm gonna go to stop sharing screen. And then I came up with this poem. The memory, did you feel it in your heart, how it affected everything? The memory flashed at you as fast as a bullet grazing your cheek. Now that's just all me. Then another broke you open. The, the opening is mostly me, and I stole that from a, some of this from a quote, but I changed it. Have we finally figured out what beauty is? Okay, it's different. She says, and too, have we finally. I just said, have we finally figured out what beauty is? Perhaps a perfect disorder of pain and pleasure. I look up and see faint scars, twi stars twinkling. God is blinking to us in Morse code. For a moment, I am fragmented. So many memories. Then they disappear and fade. It took me years to understand that forgetting was a gift. I watch and I try, but I simply can't imagine how those memories do what they do. It's not for the sake of winning. Everyone has already won. We are all wanting. If we do it right, 
with sheer delight and gratitude. Meanwhile, the world goes on. The sun sits on one side, the big nugget of the moon on the other. They are all moving across the horizon lands and the profound trees over the philosophical mountains and the intuitive rivers and we are all heading home again and you know what that means don't you tell me what else should i have done now that's seamless right that's like a seamless poem i'm very proud of this poem it usually doesn't happen this easily i just was <laughs> i had been ruminating about writing a poem all day and that was like mm, probably the third version, right? So I took it all together. Then I um, mixed it all up. Then I sat there. And then I, um, you know, then I was like, hur, 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 hur. okay, so boom, poem. So I've been doing that actually for every poem this, uh, for this particular 30 and 30. Mm, but I'm taking things from people sometimes. Like someone said, uh, the word outliers, and I have an, uh, I wrote a spoken word piece that I will, I will perform for you at some point um, on these channels uh, later this week. I'm going to be doing my poetry on Instagram. Instagram is where I put all my poetry, and I recite and perform my poetry, uh, and I'll share it so that you get you can you can hear some of the other ones. But let's say it's uh, you're writing a book, and you're like writing a book about business and sales. And then you're like, I'm so stuck. I don't know. What is it? Does it sound good? Is this making sense? What's going on? So we'll just take The Go-Giver, which, by the way, is an amazing book. It's about give to give. It's a book all about that sales is a give. It's not a give to get. It's a give to give. And it can be a give to give to give. And what does that mean? That means that you are always giving. That means you're always in service. That means you are, you are looking at people not like, oh, what can I get from them? You're looking at people like, what can I give them? What 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 bonus can I give them if they sign up with me? What what can I do to enhance the experience that they have with me as a coach? That's or as a whatever you are. So you can be a vacuum salesman and still have an amazing philosophy on how you're gonna give to give. So the go giver is a great book. And say so you're stuck. So you go and you open a page and you say, hmm. Let's see. Joe grappled with everything he'd heard. It seemed to make sense, at least, when these two characters were saying it. But as far as he could see, I just didn't square with the experience. I have a hard time seeing how, dash. Ah, said Pindar. So if I was writing a book about sales and business, and there I am just telling people what to do. Well, you should do this. You should do that. You should do this. You should do that. And then if the person says this, and then if you budget this and make sure you follow up with that. And this is all stuff you can Google. Right. So if you can Google it, it's probably not going to be a very popular book because people can Google it. But, but if you want to put your story in it and yourself in it. So look at this third third uh, chapter three. Just before noon that Monday, jo Joe arrived at the great stone mansion, eager to see what lay in store. All he knew was that he would be meeting with Pindar and a friend of his, a real estate magnate who had. Uh, who had agreed to talk with Joe of the first law of stratospheric success. Okay. But notice how he opened it just before noon that Monday. And then he's got this character that he's working with in terms of teaching him sales. Hmm. Maybe if I was writing, I would say, wow, I'm writing too much about how to do this thing that's Googleable. Googleable. I love that word. I made it up. Googleable. But I'm not really bringing the reader in. So I might say, hmm, just before noon on Monday, maybe I'll open my book with, hmm, let me see what he has for the first chapter. The first chapter, he immediately goes, not long, oh, that's the introduction. Hold on, hold on a if there was anyone at the Clayson Hill Trust Corporation who was a go-getter, it was Joe. So I'm like, oh, he's using this character named Joe to help demonstrate how he's teaching sales and business with a heart. You know, how do you teach with a, you know, sales with a heart? And I thought, or you can think, I need a character. I need to bring the reader in. So you can grab some of this. I mean, he says, not long after, um, sorry, that's the introduction again. You can look at all the beginnings. The next morning, Joe arrived at the address. Okay, so I'm going to put, I'm going to just write, take some of these beginnings of chapters 
And I'm going to see how can I bring my reader into my book the same way that Bob Berg and John David Mann did when he wrote, when they wrote this book. I'm going to put people in a situation and they're going to follow this situation through the book. And I'm going to pull, you know, pull out little bits that are going to be totally different when I do it, but I'm going to use the same format, the same voice, the same way that he's doing it. Or let's talk about the gifts of imperfection. We all know Brene Brown is amazing and she couldn't write. She said she couldn't write. She was a speaker until she met Liz Gilbert and Liz Gilbert um, pretty much taught her how to write by talking, <laughs> talking it out with people and then writing. So not too long ago, the principal of a large public elementary school and the president of the school's parent-teacher organization invited me to speak to a group of parents about the relationship between resilience and boundaries. Oh, okay. So say I'm teaching about resilience and boundaries. Lots of books out there about that. She brings us into a situation where she's teaching. So I say, hmm, I wonder if there's a conversation I had with a client or, you know, I wonder if there's uh, some, did I ever teach this? Yes, I did actually. I've taught resilience. Huh, where was I? I was in Portland. I was in Portland uh, Community College and I was asked to teach uh, a class to at-risk youth about resilience and boundaries. Perfect. So I'm going to go, wow, I'm going to steal this idea that she was putting the reader somewhere where the reader could pretend to be with her. And now the reader is getting told a story. I would maybe say what the classroom looked like, what the teenagers looked like. And then I would start talking more about the importance of resilience and boundaries and exactly how they um, work in. You know, so I would look at hers and I wouldn't steal the exact thing that she did, but I would look at how she did it. Okay, finally, memoir. So finally, memoir, you're stuck. Okay, so I think everybody gets this. Steal like an artist. You can get the book by uh, Austin Kleon. I you know, got it on Kindle, but it is really a great book to hold in your hand. Um, memoir, you're like, I think I'm just talking about boring stuff. You know, I don't know if I'm actually writing a memoir. I mean, I understand Dawn has taught me about the hero's journey. And I know that I have to start with a certain, you know, tension, but ugh, I'm just stuck. Okay. I'm just open to a page. My father had also taught us as children that animals were brothers and sisters under the skin. They died so that we might live. And of this sacrifice, we must be mindful. God make us grateful for what we are about to receive took on a new meaning when we imagine the animals surrender to our own appetites. We also, oh, wow, okay, they're getting deep. I was like, no wonder I'm feeling stuck. I'm not getting deep enough in my memoir. Hmm, I was just talking about eating, you know, the tuna fish that my grandmother used to make. She used to buy the tuna fish, cook the tuna. And then after she cooked the tuna, she would make the most delicious tuna fish that you would ever have on the face of the planet. And people thought I was crazy because I would actually skip out on doing things in high school because I'd say I have to go home because my grandmother is making tuna fish, which sounded crazy to people. They're like, what? You're not going to hang out with me ever. It was like, actually my boyfriend at the time. I was like, I got to go. You can come. You can come. And she makes them with these boiled potatoes that are really delicious with this buttery sauce. And, and, and he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're, 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 you don't want to hang out with me and watch a movie because you're going home to eat tuna fish. Now I just read that and I thought maybe, maybe I should add a little spirituality in there. Maybe I should talk about how my grandmother was such a beautiful woman who believed in God. And when I said, grandma, grandma, how did I get in here? When I was five years old, I ran over to her and I said, how did I get in here? Pointing to my hand. And she goes down and she says in her Polish accent, don you, don you, which means little Don, what do you mean? How did you get in here? And I said, how did I get in here, grandma? And she says, God put you in there. I said, well, what do you mean? Where's God? And she says, God always is and always shall be. He's who made you. And meanwhile, I can smell the tuna fish. I could just add that in and I don't have to be five, maybe, or maybe I'm five. I mean, maybe I could say at that moment, smelling the tuna fish, I also remembered how my grandmother taught me how God put, put me into my body and I can get a little deeper. Like they got pretty deep in that moment. So let's look at another moment. Um, hmm. 10 years ago, several bad things happened to me, all cardiac. Oh, that's terrible. And it seemed for a while I had no future at all, not beyond a few weeks. 
As it panned out, I didn't go rustling off the gurney down the chute like some of my fellow patients in intensive care. So my future shrank to this instant, this day, this week. I'm liking this. All right. So then I might think, hmm, writing a memoir, say again, about growing up in the Bronx. Uh, was there a time where I, I maybe thought I was going to die? And actually there was. I had a fever of 105 or 106 and they had to put me in a in a bathtub full of ice. And I was young. I remember just being like four or five or six years old. And they did get the fever down and I did live, but they were not sure if I was going to live. And so I might go, huh, growing up in the Bronx, I totally forgot about that. So will I use it in the memoir completely? I don't know, but it'll get you out of, it'll get you out of uh, writer's block. It'll totally get you out of writer's block. So you just, just open up a memoir, see, or a collection of memoirs, and see where are they going that they got these are these are famous ones i mean these these are bestseller kind of work so and mary oliver is obviously she was the poet, poet laureate of uh the united states and then we have the go-giver which was a new york times bestseller so i'm saying like go for the big stuff go for the good stuff and then see how they're writing and then where can you grab something that stirs up something that makes you go ah I know I can take it this direction or I can use that because I have that memory. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, let me go look at some of the comments. Uh, hopefully this was helpful and you had some fun thinking about this. And I want you next time you're feeling blocked, whether you're writing a business book, um, whether you're writing an, you know, an entrepreneurial book of nonfiction, whether you're writing a memoir um, or about your legacy, whether you're writing poetry, uh, you can also do this with fiction, but I'm just sticking to, uh, I like to stick to true things. Um, we can do that simply by grabbing a book and looking in it and seeing what we can steal like an artist. Again, Austin Cleon is the one that wrote uh, Steal Like an Artist. I'll link that uh, below. And um, here we go. Uh, Steal Like an Artist by Austin Cleon is just a really great book. Um, if you want to go deeper into this concept, he uh, explains it and it's a short book. It's a beautiful book. Um, all right, everybody. Well, I've got to go. I'm going to now switch over to my one short book group. That's a paid private group of clients and wonderful people who have joined my one short book revolution. And uh, they're working on their short book. Uh, it's a program that you have access to. You can go to oneshortbook.com and you can join us in there. There's lots of bonuses, lots of fun things. And I go in there live every Wednesday at one o'clock uh, to answer their questions on their books and what's going on. Everything from outline to finish line and beyond. And a bunch of them has, have reached bestseller. So a short book is the new bestseller. And I hope you had a wonderful time stealing like an artist. I'll be back next week uh, where we're going to talk more about emotional writing. We're going to talk more about, how, and this is great for businesses, right? People buy from emotion. We know this now. They buy from emotion. Emotions is what drives the, the customer. Biology is a great book about that. Emotion is also what gets you into a memoir. Emotion, right? So how, what are the tricks that I can teach you about getting emotion into your writing? So again, this is not Googleable. It's you. It's your emotion. It's your message. And don't forget to pick up a copy of Cracking the Resistance Code. Pre-sale ends on Sunday, on Easter Sunday. You won't get a signed copy and you won't be able to get into the workshop, 90-minute workshop on transformation, on writing on transformational writing and getting focus and clarity and figuring out your resistance style. So grab the pre-order and everybody else who's in my one short book group, I will see you in the group. Bye-bye. And if you have any questions, or again, if you want a strategy call with me, just write in the comments. Yes. Um, I want a strategy call. Yeah. I want a free consult, a free call, whatever you want to call it. And I will reach out to you and we can schedule a call together and see if I can be of support. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye. Let me just figure out how to get out of here.